oh that was a fulfilling demo i love doing that and i hope you liked it as well so moving on i wanted to explain a few concepts before moving forward to the in depth analysis for storage types which would help you get a better understanding when we pick up on a few terms that might be a bit convoluted so i hope everyone has been to movies right yes of course you have been either you might have booked the tickets online or you have been to the movies theaters or you have been to the movie theater to stand in the queue for your ticket in front of the booking counter so if there is one queue and there are four people in the queue and only one counter then at a single point of time only one person can get a ticket even though there might be a hundred of people queuing up and for the tickets on the other hand let's suppose there are four booking counters and there are four people in the queue all of the four people can get the ticket in the same time this is a real world example but when we shift to the computing terms if there is a data pipeline and one data at once can be processed and on the other hand you have a pipeline with a greater width and four data packets can be processed at once we can see that the way it resonates in the computing world you see the difference here that's how different bandwidth and throughput are so bandwidth is the maximum amount of data that can travel through a channel and the throughput tells you how much data was transferred from a source at any given time which is the actual amount of data that can be transferred through the network one thing i want to tell you that uh, bandwidth doesn't guarantee a greater or faster speed until and unless there is a huge amount of data that is being pushed into the pipeline let's suppose you have a 100 gbps bandwidth but do you get 100 gbps internet speed absolutely not but if you increase the bandwidth you can actually have the chance of getting a better speed because the amount of data can be pushed substantially increases and here as well if you see on the left the throughput that we have is one packet that comes per second on the right hand side that we have we have four packets so to i reiterate this once again bandwidth is the maximum amount of data that can travel through a channel and throughput tells you how much a data was transferred from a source at a given point of time which is the actual amount of data that can be transferred through the network i hope that was clear let's move on so let's deep dive into the concepts for amazon aws ebs stores so all set let's go the first one that we have here is provisioned iops ssd that is the io1 volume which is the best ssd backed volume that is for iops intensive and io1 is backed by solid state drive that is ssds and is the highest performance ebs storage option designed for critical io intensive database and application workloads as well as throughput intensive databases and data warehouse workloads such as hbase and cassandra the volume size that you get here is 4 gb to 16 terabytes max iops per volume is 64000 and the max throughput per volume is 1000 mbps the max iops per instance that you get here is 80000 and the max throughput per instance is 2375 mbps so remember for io1 is the highest performance ssd back storage type and provides very good throughput per volume if you're using hbase vertica cassandra postgres ms sql or oracle this would be a good choice so it provides a consistent baseline performance of up to 50 iops per gb to a maximum of 64000 iops and it provides up to 1000 mbps of throughput per volume the data that we have here is not that clear let me just get my legendary handbook out and let's do some calculations so as we read uh, we will get 50 iops per gb and that's up to 64000 iops so 50 iops per gb means for 1 gb you will get 50 iops so if you want 500 iops then you would need to book 10 gb simple math tells you that 500 by 50 is 10 but if you try some over smartness and try to get around 600 iops for 10 gb that would result in an error and here we need to understand that in order to achieve the limit of 64000 iops and 1000 mbps throughput the volume must be attached to a nitro system ec2 instance otherwise you will have 32000 iops for non nitro system ec2 instance let's check the demo so if you want to see the type of volumes that we have go to create volume 
on the left hand side if you see elastic block store and volumes right go ahead and click on create volume so here you will see the drop down where you have all the volume types okay so the first one that we wanted to discuss was provisioned IOPS SSD, that's the IO1. And what we can see here is the requested number of IO operations per second that the volume can support. For provision IOPS, uh, you can provision up to 50 IOPS per GB that we already discussed. For general purpose SSD volumes, baseline performance is 3 IOPS per GB with a minimum of 100 IOPS and a maximum of 10,000 IOPS. So what it tells is, as we I already have here, 4 GB is the minimum. If I type 4 GB, it will reduce the IOPS to 200. Okay, which is multiple of 50. 4 into 50 is 200. So this is the minimum IOPS that I'm going to get. So, but minimum IOPS on provision IOPS SSD is 100. So even though you have a size of 4 GB, you can reduce the IOPS to 100. It won't no, affect on this one. But if you go ahead and reduce this, then you'll get an error. A provisioned IOPS SSD volume must be at least 4 GB in size. Okay, this is what it tells. So now what happens is if I go ahead and make it 100. So as I already told you, it's 50 IOPS per GB, then 100 into 50 is 5000. I can go with this, but if I try to increase this, no. The maximum ratio of 50 is to 1 is permitted between IOPS and volume size. But what exactly won't work is, let's suppose I have 16384 and I try to minim maximize it to, the maximum is 64,000, right? See, volumes greater than 32,000 IOPS must be attached to an nitro based instance to achieve provision performance. So the max that you can have here is basically like uh, 32,000 for the volume types that you have. Even if I increase it to uh, 32,001 also, it won't work <laughs> because the limit has been set to 32,000. Okay, so even though you have increased the size to the fullest, you cannot have the maximum IOPS of 64,000 until and unless you have Nitro based EC2 instance. So the second one is general purpose SSD, the GP2 volume. It's a reasonably good SSD backed volume and GP2 is the default EBS volume type for Amazon EC2 instances. So it is suitable for a broad range of transactional workloads, including dev test environments, low latency interactive applications and boot volumes. It offers single digit millisecond latencies. That's huge, man. The consistent baseline performance that you get here is up to three IOPS per GB and a minimum of 100 IOPS uh, to a maximum of 16,000 IOPS. So to provide up to 250 Mbps of throughput per volume, one more thing that you need to understand is GP2 volumes smaller than one terabyte can also burst up to 3000 IOPS. So let's do some calculations. So we get three IOPS per GB up to 16,000 IOPS as we already know. So let's take the minimum to be 100 IOPS. So for one GB, you will get 100 IOPS. For 10 GB also, you will get 100 IOPS. Till 33 GB, you will get 100 IOPS. In math, it is like per GB, if you have three IOPS, uh, it's like 100 divided by three, that is about 33 GB. So till you keep it at 33 GB, you will get the uh, IOPS for 100. And if you have 50 GB, then you will get a uh, IOPS for 150 because 50 multiplied by three is 150. And as the baseline performance that you have is for 100, you cannot go lower than that, even if you uh, reduce the volume. And the next one we discussed was if you have less than one terabyte, it bur it's burstable to 3000 IOPS. So the closest to 3000 IOPS you can get below one terabyte is 995, which multiplied by three is 2985. It's simple maths and this will come in the exam. So remember this, okay? So, and if you want to max out and want to have 16,000 IOPS, the amount of GB that you would set is 5333. That is multiplied by three is 15,999. That is 16,000, not exactly that, but yes, it's very close to 16,000. And you need to understand that GP2 is designed to deliver the provision performance of 99% of the time. And if you have a workload where low latency is critical or you need better performance consistency, AWS recommends that you use IO1. The second one that I wanted to discuss was general purpose SSD, the GP2 that we have. 
and let's suppose so the minimum is 1 gb that you have for 1 gb uh, the minimum iops that you get is around 100 iops so 1 into 3 so baseline of 3 iops per gb means if i multiply 1 with 3 i should not get 3 iops isn't it so the minimum baseline that you have is 100 iops so the maximum that you can do is like 33 it is below 100 and let's suppose i increase it to 400 i get a baseline of 1200 and let's suppose the maximum that i can have here is as i already discussed to make sure that i have a burstable capacity 995 so this is the maximum that i can have so 995 is goes to 2985 that's the maximum that i can get so third one and we are moving forward with the hdd type storage uh, that is a throughput optimized hard disk drive that is the st1 so st1 is backed by hard disk drives and is ideal for frequently accessed throughput intensive workloads with large data set and large io sizes such as map reduce kafka log processing data warehouse and etl workloads so these volumes deliver performance in terms of throughput measured in mbps you remember the difference like if you use a ssd it was in iops and when you use a hdd or hdd it's in mb per second so it is basically a low cost hard drive volume designed for frequently accessed throughput intensive workloads so mostly it is used for big data data warehouses and log processing you can use this when you're working with map reduce kafka log processing data warehouse and etl it has the ability to burst up to 250 mbps per terabyte Coming to the performance aspect, it will provide you a baseline throughput of 40 Mbps per terabyte and a maximum throughput of 500 Mbps per volume. Uh, so it will provide you up to 250 Mbps of throughput per volume. The GP2 volumes which are smaller than 1 terabyte can be burstable up to 3000 IOPS. Remember that it cannot be a boot volume. Okay, so ST1 cannot be a boot volume. So let's do some calculation again. So we get 40 Mbps per terabyte okay so and you can max up to 500 mbps so coming to the calculation part so here we get minimum of 500 gb the volume and you cannot reduce it below that you take this and you will get the minimum of 500 gb and uh, with this 500 gb you get 20 mbps because it's the baseline that you get 40 mbps per terabyte 500 gb is half of that and you will get half of 40 that is 20 mbps with 4000 GB, you will get around 157 Mbps because 4000 by 1024, because basically when we convert GB to TB, we divide it by 1024. And when you multiply by 40, that is a 40 Mbps, you get around 156.25. Simple maths. So as the max is about 16,384 GB, that is 16,384 divided by 1024 terabyte into or multiplied by 40 is equal to 640 but you will still reach 500 only with 500 being the limit you get 500 itself even though you have 16384 gb which you convert it into terabytes multiplied by 40 mb per second you will get around 640 but you cannot reach 640 because the baseline limit for that is set to 500 even if you consume 16384 you will never reach to 640 you will always stay at the baseline of 500 so remember that so sc1 is designed to deliver the expected throughput performance of 99 percent of the time and has enough io credits to support a full volume scan at burstable rate the third one that i want to discuss was throughput optimized hard disk drive sc1 and uh, here also so what we get here is like let's suppose we have 500 gb okay so the baseline performance that you have is 40 mbps per terabyte so you get 20 mbps isn't it so let's suppose i keep 1000 i'll get 40 so basically it is like 40 mbps per terabyte so the maximum that uh, the minimum that you can go for is like 500 if you go below this 400 or something you cannot that will not work for you let's suppose you reach the maximum 16384 okay then you get the baseline of 500 itself even though 16384 divided by 1024 is 640 still the baseline performance as it has been benchmarked as 500 you will get 500 itself the baseline is 12 mbps 1 terabyte half of 1 tb is 500 gb 
as per our calculations right now so we get 6 mb per second throughput for 500 gb with 4000 gb you get 47 mbps that is around 4000 divided by 1024 that is a terabyte conversion into 12 the baseline uh, throughput that you have is equal to 46.87 that is around of 47 so as max is 16384 gb that you can procure so 16384 by 1024 that is in terabytes into 12 is 192. So you cannot exceed 16384 GB. That's something to ponder upon because the max throughput is 250. But as max volume that you can get is 16384, you can only reach up to 192. That's something I would like to dig more. Let's see that. Uh, the last one that I wanted to discuss was cold HDD. Okay, cold HDD also has a similar concept like the minimum is 500 if you go below this it won't work and it has a baseline performance of 12 Mbps so if I have 500 here it will give you 6 just like the previous one we had is 40 Mbps per terabyte so if I give 500 you will get 6 if I give 1000 you will get 12 that's the baseline performance per terabyte and if you increase it to the maximum 16384 you will get 192 even though you have 250 as the max throughput volume so that's one of the tricky things that you have here and uh, that's what makes it pretty interesting isn't it <music>